Hello gamers, my name is KK and today we are completing the Elite Blue Narius. Uh, this one is not gonna be easy, this is not the... Uh, this, is, this is probably the hardest one out of the four boss balloons that we already had. And here I decided to have the buff. So we will abuse today the game mechanics. Um, I think for the most people it is reasonable to drop either a cash drop or the uh, Insta Monkey farm because let's be honest this is pretty hard event and to, here not many people will complete it so this is exactly what I did and because first I tried to come up with the econo high economy strategy on the Elite Blunarias and it turned out to be pretty disastrous because even if I were to complete it, I am pretty certain that most of you, if not all of you, will not ever complete this Lunaris. So I decided to go the other way and start with the cash drop. So this is what I recommend you to do as well. And Okay, now that we get this over with, let's begin. So we place either the cat drop or the farm, we start with the Benjamin and then we start placing more and more farms. Uh, the economy is the name of the game and we need to be as frugal as possible on this map because on the Bulnarius Prime it is not as easy to farm as it was on the all previous maps that we had. Here uh, there is the good spot for the Monkeyopolis but this spot is very difficult to attain so I decided to show you the easiest and working spot that will allow you to sacrifice seven farms I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this is more than enough six or seven farms is the minimum that you want to aim for when you are creating the monkeyopolis village as you can see I started with the dart free dart monkey uh, if it's not free it's if you don't have the monkey knowledge it's not big deal because we will have enough money because we basically use the cash drop in the very beginning so how do you farm you place the two zero zero farms and if you decided to place the farm insta monkey just um, have it there uh, I, I think if you want to place instas go from tier 3 so tier 2 is not gonna be enough uh, or tier 2 and cash drop or two tier 2 farms so it is all up to you the best way is of course tier 3 or tier 4 but since a lot of people don't have tier 4 farms I did not start with this one I started with the tier 3 instead and to be honest tier 3 is more than enough uh, for you to feel yourself comfortable so repeat the spots I'm using for the farms because it is pretty important um, this is the I can say it's the very best because the very best spots we if we were to go for the very best spots we would have to greet even harder and it would be a pretty difficult thing to do this one is the easiest spots with I would say the most optimal this is the right word so it's optimal you don't waste any money you don't waste any time and you feel yourself confident here so we have eight farms on the map at this stage it is only around 16 and we have two buccaneers with the dirt monkey first buccaneer to the left as you can see is 010 grape shot and now we upgrade the buccaneer to the right uh, because he also needs to be upgraded is 110 grape shot Eventually both of these buccaneers will be upgraded to the destroyers, but for now they are the safety net and basically our defenses. Uh, since we have so much economy, we can afford the boat defenses and I would say they are the most optimal. Okay, so repeat the spots of my villages as well. I put the first village in the top left on the section inside of our farm plant, industrial plant, and the second one is to the bottom right. We need those farms to give discount to each other and one of these farms, the top left, will be 102. Um, no need to upgrade the bottom one yet, so is 102 and 002. After that, you start upgrading all the farms that are in range of those villages to the 300. Uh, because with those villages, you get the discount up to tier 3 and you are able to save 500 bucks from each farm that you have here. 
Uh, I also upgraded the 002 Dart Monkey just to fend off the Camo Balloon. It's not a big deal, just a little tip. Uh, do you want to have Monkey Knowledge for this run? If you greet hard and you use Cash Drop, not necessarily. So uh, it's gonna give you a few advantages, especially the Vengeful True Sun God, because you need the Vengeful True Sun God Monkey Knowledge for this run. Uh, you don't have to have these Road Spikes or the Mana Shield, and if you don't have them, just upgrade the Grape Shots earlier than I did, maybe two to three rounds earlier. It will not affect your farming by much, but you will not leak anything. By round 28, we upgrade both of our Buccaneers to 2 to 0, because they need to be able to pop the lead balloons, and you will feel yourself very comfortable with the strong defenses on this stage. Now, we pl I place two farmers, and I also place the ninth farm. We are also looking forward to have one uh, BRF before round 40 with this strategy. It is pretty important because we will need a crap ton of money. Like this is the most expensive Blunarius that we have ever had. And because we will use a very interesting and funny strategy involving the uh, first strike capabilities. <laughs> We will have like 50 of them, and it will be very, very exciting, because first strikes are exceptional against the high HP blimps. But first, let's concentrate on the tier 1 Blunarius. We upgrade the BRF on the round 35, as, I, as far as I remember, and I also placed the village 2 to 0 to the left from the central boat, as you can see. This village is also very important and you will use it later on. But for now, BRF. The village needs to reach the boat that you have on, in center and to give it the camo vision. Now we place the tech shooter near the initial dirt monkey. And we also have another village, 0 to 0, to the right. After end, this is the right time to upgrade your defenses. So you could greet in one more BRF, or you want, if you want to play safe, just uh, upgrade two destroyers probably and chill. But I don't recommend you to be very and safe and to play the safest game because you will see that we can greet most of the times and you don't have to destroy the Blunarius uh, right as he approaches your. Uh, let, let's say the first curve of the map. You don't need to, you can wait, you can postpone it and greet more in order to afford much more farms. As you can see, before round 40 I afforded two BRFs, it is what you should be aiming for, and uh, we, for defenses we have one, I'm not too much sure, I, I should probably sell this tech shooter. Mm. Will I sell it? No. So it's 204 tech shooter, uh, and we also place one boomerang 420 and 301 alchemist. We will add the second boomerang there of the same tiers 420. Look at the bottom right, in case you didn't see. So th these boomerangs are crucial, without them, you lose, and you don't want to lose, of course. And it is important to have two of them. Uh, and after that, as you can see, Blunarius does not leak that much. But the further it goes, the worse it will become for us. This wave, as you can see, uh, we kinda defend it, but it's getting pretty scary. In order to defend all the ceramic waves of the Blunarius for sure, in the first wave you need to have two boomerangs, two alchemists, and one destroyer, three to one, to the right. So. This is pretty important, and I also upgraded the third BRF while we are popping the Blunarius, as you can see, and we are trying to go for the fourth one. How are we gonna finish this guy? Because he still has uh, two-thirds of the HP. We will use the tag zone, but first I try to greed as hard as possible because we need those monies. We need to get more cash before we actually try to spend it. So I have already 5 BRFs. This is magnificent. And after you get the 5th one, you go for the tag zone. If you did not keep up with my schedule, with my upgrades of the farms, what do you do? You have 4 BRFs by this point. Maybe if you are slightly behind, go for 4 of them, but if you are less than 4 BRFs, so don't do it, because this is kinda pretty rough. And as you can see to the right, uh, 
I did not upgrade the destroyer and I paid for it pretty steep price, almost lost. So keep this in mind, you need to have the destroyer to the right along with those two uh, boomerangs. And as you can see to the left, as soon as we can upgrade the tag zone, we upgrade it. And with the destroyer, it was not a problem for us to defend the ceramic rush. Good. Also, if you have the monkey knowledge for the primary branch, I also placed the third boomerang probably. Maybe not this time. Uh, if you have the third, the primary branch fully upgraded in the monkey knowledge, uh, sell your dart monkey and upgrade tier five uh, tech shooter. $1,000 cheaper. Uh, it's not the huge difference, but it's $1,000 nonetheless. Now we have six BRFs and we are going for more and even more. So uh, look, the sixth one is afforded on round 52, I think. Yeah. Um, now the seventh and then we will upgrade the or no, we already have seven, so it's gonna be the eighth. Uh, so we up, we will upgrade the village, so it's gonna be one zero four village, and afterwards it's gonna be one zero five village, as you can see. Our defenses are just fine, so you could sell tag zone, but with our economy, it's not imp as important this time. And as you can see, the price of Monkeyopolis is thirty-five thousand, meaning that uh, you can consume seven farms, which is just enough and it's a very convenient number um, getting more fa farms uh, is gonna be pretty problematic and we don't wanna get it too difficult for you so uh, now we replace the brfs that we have just consumed in the monkeyopolis in the very same spots uh, so nothing too more difficult over here also remember that tier 2 Blunarius has 300k HP and it's rather annoying, which is why we will uh, use the MAD. This time it will be Tag Zone, MAD and the um, Boomerang Monkeys. It's, it might seem to you that it's close, but no, this one is very simple. Also, while we're destroying it, it's very straightforward. You upgrade the MAD, you use MAD's ability, and you just target the Blunarius, and when he spits out the BFBs, you target the BFBs with this guy. You can keep on farming while you're doing this, like, you can do so much stuff at the same time, and you will not struggle with this one, so don't worry. And also, you will kill it extremely fast. So, what am I talking about? As you can see, the balloons and blimps are going on the invisible track between those two lines and this is the extended version of the Blunarius Prime map which was created specifically for the uh, Blunarius boss map, uh, boss m game mode. Okay, I also added the uh, boomerang glaive lord to the left as you can see and I upgraded the village, the second village to the MIB so it's 0, 3, 2 and this was important in order to defend the round 63 ceramics because we were struggling on the left side from them. Here uh, I would sell the, the Dirtling Gunner because we need some cash and at this stage round 65 I already afforded the tier 5 farm on the first upgrade path and we upgrade the second tier 5 farm but the th on the third upgrade path at this stage what we need is we need to fill all the space that you have to the right with farms uh, don't add more of them than I did it's the ideal number and the last one is gonna be the bank uh, monkey bank of the fifth tier you also wanna uh, either you collect all the money from it manually by activating the ability of the bank or you just place the tech bot and tech bot does all the work for you at this stage we are starting to prepare to have the water sun god water sun temple so you want to have the sacrifices the correct sacrifices for this we place the uh, 0 5 2 ice tower and in order to place the super monkey on water then the druid of wrath 005 and ninja 400 in order to get the right price what you're aiming for is 37.5 thousand selling price of these towers so um 
the selling price of the Avatar of Wrath was uh, 37,000 exactly, so I added a few more um, dollars to it so that we can get the maxed out uh, temple. This is very important to have the max sacrifices because you you will not be able to create the true vengeful true sun god unless you have all the max sacrifices. Here, as you can see, I already prepared all the sacrifices and mentioned that the um, homeland defense is out of range of the temple because we don't want to increase its range just yet. The purpose of the temple is to become very strong at the end. At this stage, temple is 400. Don't upgrade the range. To the left, you can see that I already placed 204 Super Monkey, which will later become the Legend of the Night. As you can see to the bottom right, I replaced the Boomerangs with the Ultra Juggernaut. We need the stronger tower to replace the Boomerangs in order to get rid of the Ceramics. And I also placed a few uh, Boomerangs and uh, Dart Monkey Tier 5s in the beginning of the track. Why don't we want to have the maxed out range on the Super Monkey? As simple as not stealing pops from the towers that will become paragons. I will create and you will create, we will create the dart paragon and boomerang paragon. One of the requirements for the good paragon degree for the towers is of course having a lot of pops on them. Uh, it is impossible to get like the maxed out 16.2 million pops for the paragons on the Blenaris, but why not get as close as possible? Tier 1 or degree 1 paragon is fine, but I think that uh, because you will be able to replace paragons, like some people ask me, what if I don't have paragons? You don't have to place them. It is just the good tower, one of the best towers versus Blonarius, but you don't have to. But we will. And just from so, do you under, so that you understand, how do you not place the paragons? What is the replacement for them? Replacement for them is just spam the fucking tier 5s. Uh, specifically, the 204 Super Monkey, the Flying Fortress mon Monkey Ace, the Sky Shredder Monkey Ace, the Helicopter Apache Prime, the Comanche Helicopter, the Tech Shooter, Bomb Tower, Boomerangs, Sniper, Ice Tower, like pretty much every tier 5 in the game. When you place it, you kill the bl Blunarius just fine, even the tier 5 elite one. Okay, and now I already had the uh, Legend of the Night and the um, Anti-Bloon. This is why the Sun God now is the Vengeful True Sun God, as you can see. Uh, and it is only round 91. And as you can see, we are also... Uh, we are not rich. We barely upgrade this st stuff in time. So if you were not to drop the cash drop in the early game, it would be very rough for you. And this one it was the support temple. In the support temple, you sacrifice the, either the primary or military and the support plus the magical class of the balloons, category of the, of the balloons. Here we add the Ultra Boost, as you can see, to the right, bottom right corner, we add the Ultra Boost, we add the Glue Gunner, the Bomb Tower, the Ice Tower. We upgrade the Alchemist to the Perma Brew, and we also uh, upgrade the Village to the Homeland Defense to 5-0. Also, it is very important for you to upgrade the uh, Aircraft Carrier, 5 to 0 because it doubles the attack speed of your VTSG. Okay, and now you just keep ultra boosting the Sun God. At this stage, uh, we enter the end game and the, the final stages of this Blunarius. Um, so far, it goes very smoothly. What towers do you need to have to kill the Blunarius tier 5? For the tier 4, you just need the VTSG. You don't need anything else, VTSG and Homeland Defense. You just boom, 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 and you kill it like in less than a minute, I would say, maybe two minutes. Uh, for the tier 5, we need to prepare and we need to prepare thoroughly. If you prepare, if, good, if you over prepare, you will have very smooth run where you don't lose any lives and you just chill. Also, we will have 1000 lives most likely on this run. So, uh, you also placed the uh, Perma Spike. As you can see to the bottom right, I have the Perma Spike 
and put it on smart. Uh, Promo Spike is the good safety net for us because sometimes the Moabs can leak or the, for example, the BFBs, the bad balloons, the DTs from the tier 5 balloon areas and you don't wanna die from them. This is why I placed one Perma Spike. Nothing too major, it's pretty cheap because we have two discounts. First from the VTSG, second one from the support temple. If you wanna know more details about how to create those temples, how to create the gut, etc., go to my video, I have a link in the description on how to create maxed out PTSG step by step. Now I also started to place the uh, submarines. As you can see to the right, I, the whole pond is already filled with submarines. Fill the right and left pond. So basically all the water that you can find, you fill with these submarines. As close and tight as, possibly, as you possibly can. And it is very important because these guys will deal a crap ton of damage to the balloon areas. You want to aim for at least 35. 35 is the bare minimum. Um, same thing. If you don't like this, you want to replace, you can replace them with the other tier 5s. But since this map has so much water space, I highly recommend you to have those um, preemptive strikes. We will upgrade all of them to the 240 upgrade path. We also place the Avatar of Wrath, as you can see, and the MED. Also, the good upgrade to have is the BMA, so it's 105 Alchemist. And at this stage, we start selling all of our farms and we start creating a crap ton of the Dark Monkeys and the Boomerangs. Each of the Dark Monkeys that you can see to the right uh, is 040. Ideally, we want to have 50 of them, but since we don't have the luxury of, ha of having a lot of space here, uh, we place as much, as many as we can, basically. And we do the same process with the Boomerang Monkeys. So, Boomerang Monkeys 040. And finally, round 120, where we have the Blunarius Tier 5. Uh, we sacrifice, first, we sacrifice the Dart Paragon, boom. We got the degree 41, and then we sacrifice the Boomerang Paragon, degree 26. It's alright. Nothing too major. You replace the, your Ultra Juggernaut to the right. And now what you're doing is you simply just hyper boost your true sun god, keep hyper boosting more, more and more. You add 502 sniper. It is very important because I uh, remember that I added him, uh, didn't add him at the, the very end. If you add it right now, you will kill it even quicker than I did. You also need to add the super brittle. Super brittle is the 502 ice tower. And ideally, you want to keep Blunarius in range of this tower, so you always uh, have him in range by selling it and placing it once again. More, more and more. This, this way, you will be able to get a pretty uh, good damage, because both the Sniper and Super Brutal reduce the armor of Blunarius, and the other towers can damage him much more, uh, much more, let's call it significant, because uh, it will be plus 30% more damage. I also replaced the Moab Dominator Boomerang and at this stage you don't need to do anything. You just push all your first strike capabilities abilities. Uh, they are pretty fun to use as, as well because you will see literally on the health bar of, of the Blunarius how his health decreases by tiny gaps each time you use the preemptive strike because it deals, I'm pretty sure, 10 to 11,000 HP damage. And I keep overclocking my VTSG, um, and at this stage it's all very, very simple. Our Perma Spike has the good defense to prevent anything from leaking. Uh, the VTSG and Paragons do the main job. Right after them, the MAD is a very important upgrade, so uh, 052 boom, uh, darting gunner. And the support temple is also doing a good job of destroying fucking everything. So these are the main damage dealers. VTSG, Dart Paragon, Boomerang Paragon, and I got the Veteran 3 level, by the way, in this video, which is a pretty rare occasion, and you just witnessed it. So, this is about it. If you like this video, press the like. If you dislike, press the dislike. Uh, once we figure out the strategy without the farm, if it even exists, or without the cash drop, I will release it 
almost immediately guys so for now this one this is the guide uh, subscribe now if you have any questions ask me them in the comments and see you in the next one